Hello, Laker fam, and welcome to Lakers Report by Chat Sports, all things Lakers. Now, today is a very special day. I'm sure you guys are all well aware, but today is Lakers Media Day. Now, I feel like I've been waiting for this moment for pretty much my entire life. It's been a really long time, even though it's only been about six months, which actually still is pretty long. But I know that you guys are watching are just as excited as I am, so of course, we have to start up the show just kind of talking a little bit about that and reminding you guys that today's a very important day. Now, yesterday we put out a very fun video where I actually said five questions that I would ask the Lakers players on media day if I was able to. So if you have not yet watched that video, I will have it linked down below so that you can watch it as well because those are some interesting questions. And I would of course want to get your opinions on what questions you would want to ask as well. But of course, moving on, this is the Los Angeles Lakers. So even though it's media day, everything's looking great. We're all excited. There are still some breaking news stories and some rumors that we have to talk about. Starting with the big story that everyone is talking about today, Kyle Kuzma's foot injury that he suffered this summer while playing with USA Basketball. It's looking like it may be more serious than we all initially thought. And Kuz may actually be out for a little while. I've got all the details and also Dwight Howard opens up about the failures of his 2012-2013 stint with the Lakers and later on new NBA title odds are out from our sportsbook partner BetDSI. I'll let you know what the odds makers think of the Lakers title chances. I'm Hannah Kulik aka Laker Hand. Thank you guys so much for watching Lakers Report. We've got a very exciting show for you guys, so stay tuned. But before we get into these breaking rumors and news stories, I want to make sure that you guys hit that subscribe button down below so that you do not miss a single second when it comes to our Los Angeles Lakers. And while you're at it, go ahead and give me a follow on my Instagram at Hannah Rose Kulik and my Twitter at Hannah underscore Kulik. But let's move on to the big storyline here today. And this is unfortunate because this is something that could really impact the Lakers this season. It is looking like Kyle Kuzma's foot injury that he originally suffered during practicing with Team USA, the injury that a lot of people thought he was faking, actually is going to be much more serious than a lot of people were thinking. And he actually may miss the start of the season over it. The Lakers released a statement saying that although Kuz is rehabbing and improving, he has still not yet been cleared to play and been cleared to fully practice. So he is out until mid-October. Now they did also say that once the Lakers get back from their preseason trip from China, which is their last game that they play against China is October 12th, he will have an MRI and then they will further know how long and how more serious the injury is going to be and if he would be able to return. Now let's just say Best case scenario, you know, the Lakers get back from China a couple days after October 12th. I'm sure Kuz will have the MRI immediately. Best case scenario is that he is fully cleared to play, he's fully healthy. That would only give him about 10 days, possibly even less to get in game shape because as we all know, the Lakers tip off for the regular season October 22nd versus the Clippers. So that is only a handful of days for him to really get ready. So it is a pretty big possibility that Kuz may actually miss the start of the season, which would obviously be extremely disappointing for a lot of Laker fans, myself included. Obviously this season is really a huge year for Kuz. It really could be that make or break season, that season that makes him a star or that just kind of proves he is just always going to be that sixth man. Obviously Lakers the franchise and of course the players want Want him to be that third star for the Lakers. Kyle Kuzma wants to be that third star for the Lakers, but it is all going to come down to his health. So we all just have to say a prayer that Kuz is going to be able to be healthy and that once he does get that MRI in mid-October, it all shows that he is cleared and ready to play so that Kuz can have the amazing season we are all hoping and expecting him to have. But let's move on to our next storyline here today because Dwight Howard actually opened up about his 2012 2013 failure of a season with the Los Angeles Lakers. Dwight gave an interview with NBA insider Shams Charnia in which he talked about what went wrong with his stint with the Lakers back in that 2012-2013 season. 
He claimed it was a combination of injuries and then of course his ego. He admitted that he really did let his ego get in the way there and that you know it really was a combination of him not playing when he was healthy and then of course just being selfish and just letting learning to kind of just coast on his players on his teammates. So Dwight was really opening up. It was nice to kind of see him take responsibility for his actions except that he made a mistake back you know a few years ago when he played for the purple and gold but all of the interviews that he has been giving recently I will say Dwight does seem like he has humbled he does seem like he is really grateful for this opportunity and he's been expressing that he really is willing to do whatever it takes to help this team out now do we believe that we're just gonna have to kind of wait and see how it plays out we all also know that Kobe recently gave his seal of approval with Dwight Howard rejoining the Lakers he believes that it could be a good fit and he believes that Dwight could really have a good impact with this team of course though we're just gonna have to wait and see it's gonna be something that all of us Laker fans are very curious because Dwight Howard may be saying all the right things now but will he actually walk the walk really put his ego aside and really just focus on what's the best for this team I'm gonna just say right now that I think Dwight is I'm gonna say that he's gonna have a good season I think he's gonna be able to average at least 12 points per game grab double digit rebounds if he's healthy, if he's getting the consistent minutes. But I am curious, do you think that Dwight Howard can average 12 points per game this season like I do? Let me know down in the comments below. If you do, type Y. If not, type N down below. And if you type N, also let me know what you think Dwight is going to be averaging this season because I'd be curious to see what you guys have to say. But let's move on to Lakers championship predictions because our sponsor, Bet DSI, actually has the new odds for the Lakers winning the NBA championship. Now, according to Bet DSI, the Lakers have the second best odds to win the NBA championship just behind the Los Angeles Clippers. Then, of course, the Bucks come in third. Sixers, fourth, Rockets, and the list continues to go on. Now, do you agree with Bet DSI? Do you think that the Lakers have the second best odds at winning the NBA championship? Do you think that the Los Angeles Clippers are the better team? Let me know. I personally, I mean, obviously, I'm a little biased. I am Laker hand. I personally think that the Lakers could take the Clippers in a heartbeat. And I think one of the biggest ways they can do that is the fact that the Clippers don't really even have a true center. They really only have Avica Zubats and Zubats can never handle, I love Zoo, don't get me wrong, but Zubots will never be able to handle Anthony Davis, Dwight Howard, even JaVale McGee. So I definitely think the Lakers have the advantage when it comes to Los Angeles Clippers in many different ways, but I think their center is one of the biggest ways the Lakers will be able to ultimately beat the Clippers, but let me know down in the comments below. Now, while we are also talking about Bet DSI, I wanna let you guys in on a very exciting promotion that they are running right now for us Lakers fans if you go to chatsports.com slash bet you can enter the promo code lakers 120 and you will get a hundred and twenty percent deposit bonus cash when you make your first deposit now i don't know about you guys but a winning of a hundred and twenty percent extra bonus cash that's an amazing deal and i want to make sure that you do not miss out on this awesome opportunity i'm really thankful to our sponsor bet dsi for letting us all have some extra cash to win and spend on our favorite NFL teams. NBA season is quickly approaching, so nothing like having a little extra cash to bet on our favorite sports teams and a little extra cash in our pocket in general. But let's move on to our next storyline here today because Frank Vogel is opening up about load management. Lakers head coach Frank Vogel sat down with Mike Trudell, did a Q&A with him, and one of the topics they discussed was load management and Trudell asked him if he had any intentions on doing load management if he had any set games that he knew he was going to set LeBron and Anthony Davis and let them rest and he answered that he didn't really have any set games as of now. It was obviously going to be more of a case-by-case -case basis once the season starts and kind of seeing how everything plays out, seeing when they may need to rest, seeing what the medical staff has to say, and that as of now, he doesn't have any definitive games where he knows he will definitely be sitting LeBron and or Anthony Davis out. Now, this is an interesting topic because obviously load management is something that has really gained a lot of popularity in the NBA recently. We saw this work really well last season for the 
Toronto Raptors and Kawhi Leonard. They sat him out multiple games in order to be able to stay healthy for the team. And obviously, as we all know, it works. Kawhi had an amazing season. The Raptors went on to win the NBA championship. So whatever they were doing really worked there. But in terms of Frank Vogel's answer, you know, I agree with him. I don't think that right now we need to be looking at the schedule and saying, okay, this is kind of an easy stretch of game. This is going to be an easy game. Let's just sit LeBron sit Anthony Davis out. Let's just know those games they're not going to play and prepare for it because just never know what really happens during the regular season. And some of those easier games that, you know, you may think in the beginning of the season are very winnable may actually end up being a struggle and may end up being really important must win games. So as of right now, I agree that he shouldn't even know which games he's going to sit LeBron and Anthony Davis out. Now, do I also agree that there should definitely be certain games, especially with LeBron James, since he is 35 he's going to be turning 35 this year he is older to sit out I for sure think there are some games but as of now I agree that we don't really know what games those are going to be yet we're just gonna have to wait and see how the, the season plays out and what the medical staff says and of course see if these two guys are going to be able to remain injury free which let's keep our fingers crossed obviously that's a big key to the season but in terms of Frank Vogel's answer I think that was the best answer and I agree with him that we're just gonna have to kind of play this load management by a case-by-case -case basis and really see how the season plays out now our last story that we have to talk about here today involves a former Lakers legend Kareem Abdul-Jabbar now Kareem gave a very interesting interview to USA Today Sports where he talked about a ton of stuff from his you know UCLA memorabilia to political activism to players demanding trades to of course the Los Angeles Lakers which is of course what we're going to focus here today because he had a lot of really interesting things to say about this team starting with you know the fact that he believes this year is going to be an amazing year just for the in terms of all of Los Angeles sports especially for the Los Angeles basketball teams because the Clippers Lakers rivalry is going to be really exciting obviously the Clippers have two great players he said but the Lakers have just two great players as well as well as a very deep roster Kareem wouldn't give out who he thought could have the advantage but we all know he was really thinking the purple and gold come on he had to have been but anyway it was a very interesting article he also did talk about LeBron James and his injury last year talking about how it was a very you know frustrating injury but at the end of the day it wasn't a career ending injury like Kevin Durant's was which was also something he talked a little bit about because the interviewer asked him you know a lot of people expected that Kevin Durant was going to break your all-time scoring record but now that he has this Achilles injury and a lot of question marks are still up in the air as to when he does return if he returns if if he is ever going to be the player he once was and obviously Kareem said listen you don't really know how Kevin Durant is going to return you expect and you hope for the best but obviously having an Achilles injury is something that is really serious we're just gonna kind of have to wait and see but in terms of LeBron James breaking his scoring record that could possibly happen you know obviously Kareem did acknowledge the fact that LeBron is older now he is going to be slowing down a little bit but did poke some fun and say that you know LeBron's version of slowing down is pretty much still the best player in the league it's, it's in a completely different category when you say another regular kind of NBA player is slowing down so there is still that potential but let's take a little look at the top five all-time scoring list obviously number one we have Kareem Abdul-Jabbar bar with 38,387 points. Number two is Carl Malone with 36,928 points. Third is Kobe Bryant with 33,643 points. Fourth, LeBron James, 32,543 points. And then, of course, fifth, we have Michael Jordan at 32,292 points. So LeBron is number four on that list. So he's going to need about, you know, 6,000-ish points. I'm not the best at math. This is kind of a lot of math, but around 6,000 points for him to beat Kareem's. I don't know if he's going to be able to do it, but what do you guys think? Do you think LeBron can catch up and ultimately beat Kareem Abdul-Jabbar for the most points scored by an NBA player? Comment down below. Let me know. I would love to hear what you guys have to think about this. But regardless, it was a really good read. So if you have not yet read it, I highly recommend that you do so. We talked about a lot of interesting stuff, like I mentioned. And Kareem's obviously a very interesting guy. So make sure to go ahead and read that article. 
cool. But that is going to be it for today's Lakers report, Lakers rumors roundup, the top breaking news stories regarding our purple and gold. Obviously now the number one story here is media day. And of course, then the start of training camp, the start of the preseason, and then October 22nd, Lakers versus Clippers NBA season for the Los Angeles Lakers officially tips off, and I cannot wait. Thank you guys again so much for watching this video. If you liked it, don't forget to give it a double thumbs up. Also, don't forget to subscribe here on Chat Sports and the new Chat Sports Lakers YouTube channel. Follow me on Instagram, Twitter as well. And until next time, Laker Hand is out. Bye, guys.